All right, so if you're not fresh out of college, meaning you're maybe in your late 20s or your 30s or even your 40s and beyond, you might be wondering if it's too late for you to start a career in data. So I wanna tell you right now that it's not too late. So I've known people from all backgrounds and ages who've pivoted into different careers and specifically into data. So recently I had a conversation with someone who is 70 years old, who is just learning Power BI and Python for the first time. Now they were doing it for their consulting business, so they weren't necessarily changing careers, but they were approaching brand new technical skills at the age of 70 to do better in their current role, their current business. That was mind blowing to me. Just super inspiring to hear that someone would be so late in life and still take on these new skills. So whether you're just trying to learn new skills or you are trying to make a career pivot, the path is open to anyone willing to learn. If you don't know me, my name is Matt Mike. I graduated with an English degree and spent years in the field of education. Uh, eventually I decided I wanted to do something different and made my own pivot into the field of data at the age of 31. And in this video, I'm going to share three truths about starting a career in data later in life. All right, let's jump in. Okay, the first truth I want to share is that non-traditional backgrounds are the norm in the field of data. What I've learned through my time breaking into the field and the time I've spent in the field and those I've spoken with and helped is that career changers are not the exception, they're the norm. And again, and over the years, I've met a lot of people in the field who are also from non-traditional backgrounds, even those in leadership positions. There are many people out there who are switching into data careers later in life. And another thing I've learned with that is that your experience is a strength and not a weakness. So there are often tons of different skills that we've used in our previous jobs and careers that overlap into data careers. And it's just about finding what those skills are. I find that there are many jobs out there that actually require some kind of analytical thinking or collaboration or problem solving or project management that we can uh, latch on to, speak to, and leverage as we are trying to position ourselves towards a data career. Because data careers are not just about the skills. So let me say that again. A career in data is not just about technical skills. Soft skills are huge. And the great thing about soft skills are that they overlap to so many different jobs and positions. And another thing that makes soft skills so valuable is that they are difficult to teach. I can take a course to learn a tool like SQL. I can't necessarily, I can, uh, I can take a, a course on, you know, collaboration, but most of those skills are learned through experience and you don't have to be in an analyst role to get that experience. Okay, so when we look at it that way, we see that our experience can be a strength that can be leveraged and not a weakness. Another element of that is domain expertise. So before I formally made the jump into data, I was working in a, a billing role, uh, first as an associate, then as a supervisor. And eventually I was able to find a business analyst role in the same domain, which was billing collections and credit. So because I had that domain experience, uh, I was able to leverage that and that ended up making me a very attractive candidate. And that was my formal entry into a much more technical role. Okay, so just to wrap that up, non-traditional backgrounds are, are not weird. Uh, they're, they're not an exception. They're actually becoming more of a norm, but sometimes we don't realize that and it can freak us out and we think that we're not good enough to approach a career in data. If you're watching this and thinking, hey, I would love to do this, but I have no idea where to start. Well, I built something specifically for you. The Data Career Roadmap is my one-on-one -on -one coaching program designed for early to mid-stage professionals looking to break into a data career. You'll get a personalized roadmap, four private one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me, bonus resources like my LinkedIn checklist and my outreach templates, as well as unlimited check-ins until you land a job. That's right, unlimited live check-ins with me until you get a job. I've helped over 100 people break into data and tons of people have already benefited from this program, from teachers to scientists. So if you're serious about 
about making the leap, check the link in the description below. All right, point number two, the data industry values skills over timelines. And what I mean by that is nobody cares where you started, they only care what you can do. So the great thing about a data career is it is very skill-based. So I often like to relate this to like if someone is a woodworker and they build furniture. Now, I don't care uh, what that person's background is as long as they can build a really sweet table. And similarly, I think in the data field, if you can prove that you're really good with these tools, uh, then most people don't necessarily care what your background is. They'll care a little bit, right? Like it matters, but this is where a portfolio comes in. So focusing on core skills like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Tableau, tools like that, and building projects in them that people can look at is gonna take you a long way. Um, but a common problem I see with this is people often build a few projects, throw them in a portfolio, call it good, and the projects don't look very nice. And that can sometimes work against you, right? So when you're making this jump, you wanna be honest. Sometimes people take this win at all costs uh, mindset and they're, they're just trying to get the job and they're kind of trying to do the bare minimum or even sort of cheat their way into the role. And you wanna be honest. You wanna show that you are genuinely good at these skills or that you can do a decent enough job and that you are the right fit for the role. Okay, so the only way to get there is to just work with these tools a lot. So if you can't implement them in your current job, your day to day, which I recommend you try try to do, even if you're the only one looking at the port, uh, if you can't do that, then you need to build lots and lots of projects. And you should be doing that anyways. You should have a portfolio that is legitimately impressive because if it is, I guarantee someone will want to have a conversation with you about it. But if it's kind of mid or it's not very good, then it, there probably is a higher likelihood that you'll get passed up. And tools and projects are more accessible than ever. Uh, you should definitely get started with some guided projects. There's tons out there, but you're you're gonna to wanna to build your own end-to-end -end projects to really flex your skills and build something that's a little bit more unique. And not having your hand held is ultimately gonna make you better. Okay, so let's round out this point. The data industry values skills over timeline, but you have to prove that you're actually good at those skills. And that just takes a lot of practice. All right, and point number three is your unique journey can become your advantage. So often, having a non-traditional background can actually make you a pretty well-rounded uh, individual and give you a unique perspective into an analyst job or a data job in general. So I shared before that I spent a bit of time in the teaching field. And then I was in the uh, billings, credit and collections field. I even had a short stint where I was in B2B sales. And so you can look at that on the service and say, wow, this guy's all over the all over the place. He's a, a teacher. He was an administrator, a salesperson, a billing supervisor, whatever. But I believe that each and every one of those roles gave me unique skills throughout and made me a more well-rounded person than if I had just gone to school for computer science science, gotten a master's in computer science, and gone straight into data. Sure, I'd be a little bit more specialized, and that would certainly would have fast-tracked my way into data had I known I wanted to do that when I was in college, which I didn't. But the kind of windy road that I took to data, I think ended up being an advantage for me. And to be honest, I saw that while I was applying and interviewing, and I really tried to leverage that in my conversations with people. And I think when I had those conversations about my experience, I was able to talk about them in a way that I think made me appealing enough to uh, want to at least interview and eventually hire. And I've seen the same for so many other people. And so a lot of this does come down to mindset. Like I mentioned before, you want to identify those super transferable soft skills and I guarantee you have at least a few, but it's also the mindset of being confident in those skills and confident enough that it will make you a strong analyst. That yeah, there are some maybe deficits in your experience with the technical tools, but that your uh, experience in the soft skills that you have more than make up for those things. And then when you inject a portfolio to help cover that skill or experience gap, uh, it makes you much more appealing and betters your odds of getting hired. Um, and it's just a really good look for you as an individual. And finally, you don't need permission to pursue a career in data. The ultimate blocker is thinking you're too late. I've heard people in their late 20s saying that they thought they were too late and 
being in my mid thirties now, I look back on that and I kind of laugh because I got into the field in my thirties and I've seen people much older than me break into the field for the first time. So mindset really is the ultimate blocker. Will it take you longer if you're not fresh out of college with a master's in computer science? Maybe, but it doesn't mean you can't still land a really great job. I've known more than one person who has gone from te being a teacher to having a 90K, 100K, Okay data job. And so, you know, don't get your hopes up that that's like every job out there. You need to manage expectations and kind of have expect the average. But I just mentioned that to say that, uh, you know, those were individuals who started a little bit later in life and they ended up getting a really great job. So whether the salary is above average or right about there, or maybe a little bit lower, but the work life balance is awesome. Whatever it is, just believe you can do it because you honestly can, as long as you don't give up and you're confident in your abilities and you keep working at your skills and uh, how you leverage your experience into that role. All right, so you're not too old or too far behind or too late. Only thing that matters is what you decide to do next. I hope this was helpful. If it was, uh, please like and subscribe as it does help the channel. And let me know in the comments below how you're approaching your transition into data or if you already have transitioned into the field, what advice you would give to someone who used to be in your position. And again, if you're interested in the Data Career Roadmap program, check out the link below and you can schedule a clarity call with me if you have questions and we'll chat about it then. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.